Hi everyone, this is Gonzel here. So the Kokomi banners are out, both the character and weapon banners. So let's do a quick review of them. And we'll talk about whether it's better to pull for C1 Kokomi or R1 Everlasting Moonglow, which is a signature weapon. Especially since now that we have the banner information, we can do a better uh, comparison. I also refer I also refer back to the math figures I've done to show you guys the boost that you get from C0 C1 as well as uh, from a specific weapon, a 4-star weapon, any of the 4-star weapons really, to Everlasting Moon Glow. At least those that have done weapon comparison math video for. Alright, so that's the intro. So let's, let's look at the Kokomi banner. I think the moment everyone sees this guy, Sing Chiu, you know that this is a this is already a worthwhile banner to pull for. Yeah, because that's how good Sing Chiu is. Beidou, also very good. Uh, she's one of the best uh, four star electro characters. Uh, up there together with uh, Fisher. And of course now that we have Sarah, Sarah is a really good buffer. And her burst does a lot of damage. And you have Rosara. Rosara is actually a very good uh, sub DPS as well. I personally really like her burst as well as the crit rate that she gives to the whole team. A lot of people don't really uh, appreciate that, but if you build 67% CR on your Rosaria, she is able to give 10% CR to the whole team, which is very important. In while you're doing your team rotation, that 10% CR will help a lot. Not to mention it helps in your artifact gearing as well. Okay, so those are the four star characters that we have here. Uh, the thing about Sinchu's constellations and Beidou's constellations, they are all good. And Rosara C2 is very good as well, it gives 4 seconds to a burst. So these are all characters worth getting even if you already have them. Uh, but if you have low constellations, then these are good characters to get constellations on. Okay, now Kokomi. If you already decided to pull for Kokomi, you don't need me to say whether or not she's good. But personally, I feel that she's more... Uh, she excels at support, enabler support and healer rather than DPS. Uh, she can do okay DPS, it's just not going to be like a pure DPS character, that's for sure. Although the full EM build, if we are able to get easy props on her consistently, then yes, this is that easy, the full EM build might be good. I'll put links up to do all the math videos that I have done, so you guys, you guys can refer to that uh, here and also in the description. So for Kokomi itself, uh, the full EM build is something that I will test out when she's live. So before you guys start committing to farming Thundering Fury for her, uh, better to wait for me to test it out, yeah? Because the other equipment like uh, Tenacity of Malilith, Maidens or his Heart of Death, those are all artifacts that there's no harm in you farming for them now because those are usable even for her HP build. Alright, even full EM you can use a combination of two Wanderers together with two Tenacity if you want to. Although you miss out the most important effect of Thundering Fury which is the cooldown reduction. Okay, so anyway I won't go too much into the full EM build, just check out the link, the video link if you have not already seen it. Yeah. So this banner itself, I'll say it's a pretty nice banner, especially if you are interested in getting more constellations for these four star characters, which you should because their constellations are actually pretty good. Alright, now let's talk about the weapon. <sighs> Mihoyo is... how should I put it? Mihoyo has a very good strategy here. They know that people have done the math for Everlasting Moon Glow. It's honestly one of the most underwhelming 5 star weapons I have ever seen. And I'm not I'm not being biased here or anything. I'm just doing the math and this weapon is really not that great. If you saw my previous math videos, uh, when I was comparing the weapon comparison, Prototype Ember is only like 12 to 16% behind this weapon. As a 4 star craftable weapon being behind a 5 star signature weapon. Just that small amount of percentage. Now for reference, R5 catch is 27% behind the engulfing lightning. Okay, which is uh, Raiden's current weapon, the signature weapon. And everyone is saying that the catch is good. And it's 27% behind. This weapon versus Prototype Ember 
it's only 16 to 12 percent behind 16 percent at c0 12 percent at c1 so yeah not that great honestly speaking and that's the reason why they put the primordial jade cutter here because primordial jade cutter now that people have already realized how good this weapon is yes it has a very low base attack which was the main reason why i did not pull for this weapon but the homa the effect that it has is same as homa and that effect itself makes up for the low base attack and at the same time this weapon has 44 percent crit rate at level 19 which means that it allows you to do the same thing as you have with the blizzard strayer set where you can go full crit damage on your artifacts. It means gearing easy. It also has a very good potential. It's actually one of the best DPS swords, I would say. Main DPS swords. And it's not even uh, specific to elemental, unlike the Miss Splitter Reforge, where it's specific to elemental damage characters. This is good even on physical. Although physical, you have Aquila for Vonius. But still, this is what I'm trying to say. It's, like it's a it's one of the best swords and it's a weapon that can be used it's a general weapon that can be used regardless of which character okay other than say bandit because the base attack is too low for bandits uh, buff to work well but you see their strategy here they are putting the best sword with the one of the worst five star signature weapons i've ever seen as for the four star weapons these aren't bad, but they are better 4 star weapons. Favonius Codex, Favonius Great Sword, The Flute, Dragon's Bean, Streamless. Of all these, I'll say Streamless is the one with the highest value of these 4 star weapons. But honestly, they are much better 4 star weapons to be obtained from weapon banners. Streamless is the only one here that I can say that it performs very well in its own niche. So yeah, the other four weapons are the ones where this banner is not that great really. So the only reason to pull for this banner really is for Primordial Jade Cutter, not for Everlasting Moonglow. Okay, only for Primordial Jade Cutter, not for Everlasting Moonglow. Okay, but anyway, now let's talk about the CZ C1 versus R1 Everlasting Moonglow. So first off, right, uh, I have to reference you guys back to just a quick reference back to my math. Okay. This okay, this is the weapon comparison which I already talked about. Prototype versus uh, everlasting. Now C0 C1 with the everlasting moon glow is a 40% increase at level 6 burst and it drops to 36% at level 9. This is when you are using Everlasting Moon Glow. How your C0 to C1 looks like. But it's not accurate, right? Because we are talking about whether to go from C0 to C1 or to get the R1 Everlasting Moon Glow. So, let's look at Prototype Amber. Okay, so Prototype Amber. C0 to C1 is a 46% increase at level 6 burst and drops to 41% at level 9. Still very, very nice for Constellation uh, buff per se. Because... Uh, for your reference, Raiden C2, which everyone is talking about where her damage potential is locked behind. That gives you 42 to 43% increase. C1 here gives you 41% increase. So that's very nice. This is on a typical HP main TPS build. And let's talk about Mepa Meh. Mepame, I do believe a lot of people have it uh, crafted and ready. So this weapon, you get a 45% and a 40%. So basically just 1% behind Prototype Amber uh, on both levels of burst, level 6 and level 9. So her C1 is actually a very good constellation that gives a very nice buff. Now let's go back to the weapon comparison. Awa Everlasting is only slightly better than Prototype Amber by 12 to 16 percent compare that to the 40 plus percent from c0 to c1 and it's pretty straightforward which to go for i'll say definitely c0 to c1 c1 is the one to go for rather than getting her weapon not to mention that the four star characters here are better right than say the four star weapons here 
Although this 5 star weapon is nice, very nice. But it's a trap that Mihoyo is setting up, man. I mean, I don't have Primal Logic Carter. I want Primal Logic Carter. But I'm not, still not gonna pull on this weapon. Banner. Because I don't like Everlasting Moon Glow. Its performance is very bad based on the math that I have done. And not to mention that this weapon is really designed really more for main DPS. It doesn't really help her support capabilities per se. Other than the higher slightly higher HP subs than Prototype Ember and the healing bonus gain. That's all. Not worthy in my opinion. So even with the best sword here that I, I as a will, I do not have, I don't even want to put on this banner. I would rather put on this banner. Even though I have all the fast star characters at C6 here, I'll still rather put on this banner because C0 to C1 gives you such a big boost, right? I'll rather take that, man. But personally, I'll just pull a C0. I'll use her with my Sacrificial Fragments to test out the full EM build. I will also use her with TTODS for pure support build. And also Prototype Ember, because I also have a Prototype Ember ready. So that is the weapon that we will test out too. Mepa Mare, unfortunately, I can't test out. So only Prototype Ember, TTODS, and the... Uh, Sacrificial Fragments, those are the ones that I will test out when Kokomi goes live and we'll test out C0 as well. If I do like Kokomi after one to two weeks of playing her, then I will go further to get a C1. But I'll stop there. Because her C2 heal effect, while nice, always remember that the effect is gone once your characters are healed above 50% HP. And if that's the case, it's way too conditional for Constellation. If you compare to other characters, their constellation, most of them do not have conditions attached to it. Okay. Whatever conditions they have is about like when you are using your burst. Which, in the first place, if a character is designed to use their burst, it's not an issue. So, yeah. Kokomi is one of the... It's a character where her constellations are a bit underwhelming, other than C1. C1 is actually really, really good. Her C1 is equivalent to Raiden's C2. So that is a reference for you guys to know how good it is. So to conclude, I'll say C1 Kokomi versus R1 of this weapon is a definite 100% resounding win for C1. Unless you want Primordial J Carter badly. But think of it this way, you can always come back again in another weapon banner that might be better for you to pull on. Right? At least that's what I hope and what I'll be waiting for. Yep, so I have to thank Mihoyo this time. They are making it easy for me to cut down my spending on Genshin by giving an underwhelming 5 star weapon as well as a constellations that are way too conditional for my liking. Now if you want to see my thoughts of on each of the constellations in detail, you can check out the very first math video that I did on Kokomi, the math guide one. In there, I run through all the constellations, so yeah, you know what I think about those. And yep, that's all for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, tomorrow, we'll likely get the character demo for Kokomi. So we'll definitely do a reaction video on that and we'll do a comparison between the English and Japanese version as well. Then the next day after that will be Kokomi Day. Okay? Alright, if you like the content, remember the video and click subscribe for more. Bye!